A security camera shows staff who is trying to get in the building, but you can't get in without being buzzed in. But you're still not in the building yet. You're in the foyer. There's another set of doors you have to get through before you can get into the school. When you head to the polls on Tuesday, Hastings voters, you might see something surprising. A drop in tax rate. If approved by voters, the current mill will slightly draw from 6.9 mills to 6.8 mils, and if it fails, even lower to 6 mils. If approved, district officials say they'll use some of the funds to replace these aging fleets along with playground equipment. Both items, Goebel says, are needed. From then, it took another eight hours to locate the plane. These aerials from Sky I-3 show the scene of last night's plane crash. A private twin engine plane sitting in a rural area in pieces. Economic development leaders say this Marshall mega site will be a game changer for industrial development here in southwest Michigan with 1600 acres to work with. That's 2.5 square miles of vacant land. A new look for bicyclists around Kalamazoo. Along this stretch of Level Street, an added layer of security. A controversial statue in Allendale up for debate again today as activists push to get this monument changed or removed. Why some say this representation does not stand for the community. The Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Office tells me they are investigating mail thefts happening here in Vicksburg. They tell me what thieves are looking for in your mailbox are unemployment checks, social security or tax refunds, any money or personal information they can get their hands on. I asked the city manager today if South Haven is looking to make any changes. She says lifeguards aren't being considered. A quieter day in South Haven, waves on South Beach, calmer. Child care, especially pre-K programs like preschool, can be one of the biggest items on a young family's budget. <laughs> it's the season opener for the gold team in South Haven. One, two, three. Elevation. But the game almost didn't happen. We didn't really know if we were going to be able to have this season for baseball. Less than two weeks before their big Little League debut, their coach stepped down. Good way to keep it in front. Refusing to let their boys miss out. Put them too high. A group of moms. Too high, we're running hard. They know that we're going to be there no matter what for them. We got this, all right? One more out. Stepped up to the plate. I was kind of hoping she would be coached because she taught me basically everything I know about baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Now five women deep in the dugout. This coaching staff would likely argue they're not quite angels in the outfield. But to these 11 and 12 year olds, going, we're going hard, hard, hard. They're all really good coaches. They're pretty darn close. I'd say the thing she's best at is probably encouraging us as a team and bringing us together. There you go. Nice job. Of course, they're not the first women to ever teach boys about baseball. I want them to have fun. Are you ready to and they certainly won't be the last. And if they get a little bit better by the end of the year, then I've done my job. Go, 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 hard! Regardless of stats or scores, their efforts have already earned them a spot in a very special Hall of Fame. Just to ask their sons. She's probably the best coach and the best mom I could have. Reporting in South Haven, Erica Moke. Three, one, two, three, C! News Channel 3. This is happening across the country. The U.S. Supreme Court determined life behind bars was cruel and unusual punishment for kids. Now juveniles convicted and sentenced to life in prison without parole are being resentenced. Their victims and the victims' families are now reliving their darkest days, including a Battle Creek mom. Nicole didn't like dolls. She liked cars and trucks and climbing trees. Nicole was born in January 1989. She was the prettiest baby I ever seen in my life. But nobody's going to forget Nicole. It was so brutal. Her murder was so brutal. Robin Buonodono will never forget the last time she saw her daughter alive. The five year old was wearing pink socks. It was April 26th, 1994, the day Nicole Van Noti was murdered by the kid next door. It was like maybe quarter to four. I called the police. I 
told him, I said, my daughter is missing. I don't see her anywhere. I went on my own looking and I was screaming for her. The next day, Battle Creek detective Tim Hurt finds Nicole's pink sock in an abandoned home, right across the street from where she lived with her mom. And when I went down in the basement, I saw Nicole's clothing. I saw her a pink sock, her tennis shoes, and I saw trauma. I knew from that point in time that she was either seriously injured or possibly dead. Feet away from that abandoned home, in a shallow grave, he finds a garbage bag. And as we untied the bag, it revealed a, a little girl, small little girl, possibly five years old. And from the pink sock that was on her foot, it matches the pink sock in the house. I had reason to believe this was Nicole. And uh, she was dead. It was one of the first and only times the now retired detective cried on the job. It was truly the worst thing that I'd ever seen in my career and probably is the worst thing to this day. The little girl's killer was standing behind Hurt, watching him open the garbage bag. 16-year-old Jason Simons. In a 1994 police interrogation, Simons admits to hitting Nicole in the head with a hatchet, severely beating her and raping her. The why, according to investigators, because he wanted to. He saw Nicole in her yard and that he asked her if she wanted to play with his sister. Nicole was friends with Simon's stepsister. They often played together at the abandoned home. It had become their playhouse. When she steps inside the stairs, he hits her in the head with that hatchet. And then he carries her downstairs to an area that was clear, and he told us that he struck her several times with a, a wooden pole and also a metal curtain rod. And when I asked him, I said, why did you strike her? He said he wanted to make sure that she was dead. More than a year later, on May 4th, 1995, Simons is sentenced. It's a sentence of the court uh, that Jason Simons, that you spend the remainder of your natural life uh, without the possibility of parole within the custody of the Michigan Department of Corrections. Right now, Simons is here at the Richard A. Handlin Correctional Facility in Ionia. He's been behind bars for 28 years. His first chance at freedom will be discussed this upcoming fall in a Miller hearing. It's a hearing decided by a U.S. Supreme Court ruling that states mandatory sentences of life without parole are unconstitutional for juvenile offenders. Well, the big argument is that uh, the people that are getting life without parole, they should be few and far between. So when the courts are looking at these things, the argument is being made that uh, not enough people are getting parole. Calhoun County Prosecutor David Gilbert says the court will consider his age, maturity, and peer pressure, among other mitigating factors. At some certain age, you know the seriousness of what you're doing about some things. And uh, you know life is precious. You know mm -hmm. that if you do something, if you hit somebody with a hatchet, they might just die. And you know that when you're burying them, they are dead. Simons, now 44, will know in November if he'll get a reduced sentence. <laughs> Redemption to live a life again outside of these walls. There's nothing inside of me that believes that he can be rehabilitated. After 28 years in prison, he's still lived more life than her five year old daughter ever got to have. 28 years of hell. I always said I'm going to be my daughter's voice until I can't breathe. Simons is one of two juvenile offenders left in Calhoun County to be resentenced. Those new sentences take into account time already served. Over the next three years, three other convicted killers in Calhoun County could be released. To find out who they are and their victims, go to our website, wwmt.com. In studio, Allie Jennerjohn, News Channel 3.